week two of the fantasy football season. Here's a few running backs. I have a sleepers this week. The first guy, Zach Moss of the Indianapolis Colts. I think Zach Moss is going to be the man over here in Indianapolis. Deion Jackson had an opportunity in week one, and he literally fumbled it away with two fumbles in the ball game and pretty much not doing anything. So right now, they need a bruise running back in there. Anthony Richardson, he took some big hits in that ball game, but he's going to play here in week two. And it's a pretty good matchup of the Houston Texans, where we just saw the Baltimore Ravens rush for three touchdowns in that ball game. So Zach Morris, we know he missed week one with the forearm injury. But like I said, they needed in between the tackles guy. Deion Jackson's more of a third down passing downs back, in my opinion. So if Morris comes back this week, I think he's going to have a decent role. 12, 15 touches available right now in 75% of fantasy leagues. And it wouldn't be surprising to me if he could put RB2 numbers up this week. The next running back, Truba Hubbard of the Carolina Panthers. So Hubbard right now, he's available in tons of fantasy leagues at 84%. And he had a good role in week one for this Carolina Panther team. Nine carries, 60 yards, two catches, nine yards in the ball game. So we know this Panther team, they got young quarterback Bryce Young, and they're gonna look to stay in games and keep defenses off the field here by running the football a lot. And Miles Sanders, I just don't think he's that productive of running back. Chuba Hubbard, he had six yards of carry in the week one ball game at the Atlanta Falcons. And right here, week two, Monday Night Football, the first game of the doubleheader here. I think he can make some plays, and it wouldn't be surprising to me if he eats into that Sanders workload or if this is a 50-50 split when it's all said and done. So right now, available in tons of leagues. We saw what he could do where he gets some extended playing time over the last few seasons when Christian McCaffrey was out and then traded last year where it was him and Foreman in the backfield. So right now, like I said, I think he's more talented of a running back than Sanders. Definitely a better wide receiver and route runner out of the backfield than Sanders. So right now, while he's out there in a bunch of fantasy leagues, and I think he could put up flex option in deeper leagues here. He's a sleeper at the back position this week in the third and final running back. I have his sleep at this week's Roscon Johnson of the Chicago Bears. So I had him on the list last week, and he didn't disappoint as well as Johnson. Right now, I know he's only available in 71% of fantasy leagues, but he definitely could be the passing downs back and have that role locked in over there for the Chicago Bear team. And he does fit in my opinion, with a Justin Fields at the quarterback position. So in week one, five carries, 20 rush yards. I know it was a garbage time touchdown in the fourth quarter while they were trailing. 20 points in that game was the Bears, but he had six catches, 35 yards. And that's a specialty in this ball game here. Week two could be a matchup once again where they're trailing at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and they're going to have to throw a decent amount of times or let Fields just go out there and find running lanes and stuff. But anyway, right now, I think Johnson could be a serviceable number two running back for this fan, for fantasy owners and PPR leagues this week. And like I said, the game script possibly could be with Ed Trail because week one he did have 17 and a half fantasy points in PPR leagues. He is Roshan Johnson. So this week, I think once again, he could put in a decent performance. I'm not saying 17 and a half points, but anywhere from eight to 12 points is definitely a possibility. So that's a few running backs I have as sleepers here for week two of the fantasy football season.